us. I'm Beth Jones. And I'm Peter Dubois. Last night, Governor Janet Mills delivered her State of the State address before a joint convention of the legislature. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard recaps the speech and reaction from lawmakers. The state of our state is strong. During her State of the State address, Governor Mills addressed the legislature and Maine people about the impacts the recent severe storms had on the state. And she says more investments need to be made to fight climate change. Essentially, I'm talking about taking from the rainy day fund to respond to some pretty rainy days we've had and some pretty rainy days ahead. It's the number one threat to our world. Our top leaders don't address it enough. And there are still uh, people in this building that are in denial. I'm not an advocate of the climate change issue. Um, I've proven several times that the climate crisis was not what caused the storms that happened. The governor also focused on the October 25th mass shooting in Lewiston. During the speech, she mentioned that two days prior to the mass shooting, the FBI ranked Maine one of the safest states for gun violence. In late October, a gunman took the lives of 18 innocent civilian citizens from age, ages 14 to 76 and injured many more physically and emotionally. For the sake of our state, doing nothing is not an option. That call for bipartisanship was echoed by some lawmakers, but others held their ground when it came to their views on gun rights. But taking away and making it more difficult for law-abiding citizens to have the means to defend themselves and their families, that's not going to make us safer. It might give us an illusion of safety. Government's great at doing that. But what we need is the ability to defend ourselves and our families. And I think what she said, for some, it's not enough. For others, it's too much. So let's hope we can get something done in the middle here. I get a little little worried that we can be a little uh, too partisan and I hope that for the sake of the people of Maine that we're able to kind of shove some things aside and actually pass something that's meaningful. Governor Mills adds that while it has been a hard, tough year for Maine, Mainers are resilient. Maine people do not welcome crisis or disaster, but we will always rise to meet them. At the State House, I'm Corey Bouchard for AP7 and Fox 22 News. Families are still reeling from the loss of loved ones in the Lewiston mass shooting and in the wake of the governor's speech, some asking about gun control, which is one of Governor Mills' primary focuses. Mel Meyer reports. She was right up front. Bobby Nichols was bullying with her sister Trisha Aslan when gunfire erupted inside just-in-time recreation. Her sister didn't survive. When they told me, I, I couldn't breathe. Doing nothing is not an option. Now, three months after the state's deadliest mass shooting, the governor is calling for improvements to the mental health system. So I propose that we establish a network of crisis receiving centers across Maine so that any person suffering a mental health crisis can get prompt and appropriate care. I would like to see how that plays out though. The governor wants to increase the penalty for selling a firearm to someone who can't have one, and she is proposing closing the background check loophole by requiring them for private sales or at gun shows. I guess it's a bigger start than I've seen most people make. Arthur Barnard's son, Arthur Strout, was killed at Schmangie's. He doesn't understand why there's opposition. Well, we can't have people buying guns in parking lots with no one knowing about it or not knowing what their mental state is. The governor also wants to close a gap in the existing yellow flag law by setting up a process where guns could be taken away from someone before a full court hearing. They had enough information where they had to take his guns and they should have and they didn't. So somebody didn't do their job. Nichols wants accountability. There's got to be uh, repercussions. In a radio interview, Republican Representative Billy Bob Fockingham said he didn't hear anything in the governor's speech that would have changed what happened. And we quote, shouldn't build gun policy on the actions of one person. A person really doesn't know until they've gone through this. Barnard says it's about more than the 18 people killed in Lewiston. How many mass shootings does it take? And that was Mal Meyer reporting. 
Well, the bill seeking to give subpoena power to the commission investigating the Lewiston mass shooting cleared its first legislative hurdle today. The commission said they are seeking subpoena power so they have the ability to compel witness testimony and documents from sources like the U.S. Army, which is refusing to cooperate with the commission's investigation. The bill passed the Judiciary Committee by unanimous vote. Because the measure is classified as an emergency bill, though, it would have to be approved by both chambers with a two-thirds majority in order to pass. If successful, the bill would take effect immediately, though, after passing. The December storm that caused major flooding and power outages across the state has been declared a major disaster by President Biden. This move will hopefully provide more relief to the impacted counties that are still trying to recover. Our Grace Blanchard has more. On December 18, 2023, communities across central and western Maine faced significant flooding, prolonged power outages, and extensive damage. On Wednesday, the Biden administration officially declared the storm to be a major disaster. This is welcome relief for individuals and families in the counties that sustained some of the heaviest damage as part of the December storms. They've been patiently waiting. It's great to have this news. A federal investigation determined the storm caused more than $20 million in public infrastructure damage. The official declaration by the president allows for additional funding to help cover the cost of repairs and establish disaster recovery centers in the counties that were most impacted. There are nine counties that are eligible for public assistance to um, fix infrastructure, buildings, roads, culverts, things like that. Individual assistance will also be made available to eligible families in Androscoggin, Franklin, Kennebec, Oxford, and Somerset counties. However, the January storms that resulted in destruction all along Maine's coastlines are not included in this disaster declaration. If we don't build back more resilient and better to hold on to that 20 miles that the state of Maine has for that working waterfront, we are just not going to be able to survive. However, MEMA officials say efforts are underway to receive more federal funding for the January 10th and 13th storm surges. We deal with things one storm at a time. Process is still underway for the January storms, and we don't have that information just yet. We expect to in early February. Helpful links to recovery resources are available on our website. I'm Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, Senator Angus King spoke on the Senate floor tonight, urging his colleagues to vote in favor of sending additional funds to Ukraine in the next appropriations bill. He stressed the importance of confronting dictatorships, saying if we as a country waver on our support for Ukraine, it would send the wrong message and could result in further aggression by Russia in other parts of the world. If we back away, walk away, pull out and leave the Ukrainians without the resources to defend themselves, it will compromise the interests of this country for 50 years. It will be viewed as one of the greatest geopolitical mistakes of the 21st century. Well, to hear Senator King's full speech, you can head to this story on our website, foxbangor.com. In other news, gambling has come a long way since the days of the Rat Pack and Mississippi River Boats. With Maine's online sports betting and the Super Bowl less than two weeks away now, our Doug Banks shares with us some terminology before you place that first bet. It only takes a few clicks to have sports betting at your fingertips. And according to Maine's Gambling Control Unit Executive Director Milton Champion, a lot of Mainers have been on state-approved DraftKings and Caesars Sportsbook making those few clicks. Due to the state's 10% tax cut, the department estimated over $6 million will go to Maine government by the end of the first year. Now almost three months since going live, the state has brought in over $900,000. The estimates were around $6 million, and November, if, if November and December is the indication, it looks like we're going to meet those estimates. Using the department's app to track bets in real time across the state, Champion says on Super Bowl Sunday, the map will almost be completely covered. Historically, Super Bowl Sunday brings in a lot of bets, and this year will be the first Super Bowl to have the ease of making bets on your phone in Maine. And Champion says the same advice still applies no matter what day of the year it is. Know when to walk away. It's a fair industry, you know, it, it really is, but you got to have your own, own controls as well. Some jargon to look out for includes prop bets, a side bet that doesn't include the final score, like points, tackles, or carries. A teaser is parlays with numbers adjusted in the user's favor in exchange for a lower payout. 
A reverse teaser or pleaser means the opposite. To see these and many more, go to our website, foxbangor.com. In Augusta, Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. The Maine Warden Service is expanding a program to safely and quickly rescue people with cognitive conditions who've gone missing. Our David Ledford has more on Project Lifesaver. The Maine Game Warden Service carries out several search and rescue missions each year, and a number of those calls are for individuals with a dementia-related illness who have wandered away from home. Generally, we respond to dozens in the course of a year searches for people with either Alzheimer's, dementia. According to the Warden Service, those calls can be a drain on resources. Those searches can be some of the most difficult and kind of last the longest, cost the most. You're talking about bringing in our staff from all over the state sometimes. That's why for the last three years, the Warden Service has been using Project Lifesaver to help bring loved ones home. I have located subject. Under the program, those with a dementia-related illness wear a wrist or ankle bracelet that emits a radio signal. In the event of an emergency, trained response teams can pick up the bracelet signal with a tracking device. Main game wardens say that this cuts down on search and rescue times significantly. Having something like this that, you know, instead of a day, two days, three days searching, sometimes you can end it in 20 minutes. This week, the Alzheimer's Foundation of America awarded $6,000 in funding, which will be used to open up the voluntary program to more families. Wandering is a very common behavior among individuals living with dementia, and it's also extremely dangerous. This is something that caregivers can use to keep their loved ones safe. To learn more about Project Lifesaver, visit our website, foxbangor.com. In Sydney, David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. All right, and looking outdoors tonight, uh, things are already starting to feel a little chilly out there. They are. Yeah, yeah uh, we've been experiencing that the last couple of days. Yeah, last night especially was was cold. I yeah. I looked at the you know the the reading in my car on my dash, <laughs> and it was five degrees. And I got out of my car and was like, oh yeah, sure feels like it. Yeah, not quite that bad tonight. No, not we're in at all. a little bit of a reprieve zone right now. Exactly. It looks like there are some warmer days ahead. Indeed. Let's go ahead and get a first check of our forecast. Thank you so much, Beth. All right, the last nine days, we've had some very cloudy skies. Remember all that thick cloud cover, but just yesterday, finally, we did break that streak of around nine days in a row of very cloudy skies. But what a cold start to the morning, right? Five below zero here in town. Look at Millinocket. Wow. I would not want to be up there. 13 below zero earlier this morning. Of course, that feels like temperature closer to 20 below zero. So bitterly cold temperatures all over the state. We did re rebound nicely. I mean, near average, I would say 28 degrees in town, right by the coast. Same story, some upper 20s and then up north. Of course, some thicker snowpack. We did see some mid 20s outside. Overall, though, we are starting to have some increase in clouds. A little bit of snow will be moving in by tomorrow. But overnight tonight, though, we're going to continue to stay mainly cloudy. Temperatures near 20 degrees. All right, not too bad. Yeah, not bad at all. All righty. Well, still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, kids at the All Saints Catholic School took part in a service project to help Maine's homeless population. And a traveling art exhibit aims to spark healthy dialogue around the topic of abortion. Those stories and more local news when we come right back. The apprentice program is learning while doing, but also acknowledging that people can't learn while they do with no money. The other important thing to understand is that with our partnership with SMCC and USM, we've made a commitment that the college tuition for the courses is free to participants. And you have an ability to mold those individuals in a way that you know they're going to be successful and ensure that the work that they're doing is high quality work. It's not just sort of uh, learning out of context. It's successful for the whole person. Introducing the Chevy family of SUVs. Do more with tech. Do more with safety. Do more with style. The Chevy family of SUVs. There's one for everything you do. Current qualified lessees can get this Equinox for around $269 a month. Or get $1,500 total cash allowance on this Equinox. Visit your main Chevy dealer. Commercial vehicles can be dangerous and they usually carry big insurance policies. So whether you're hurt by a landscaping truck like this, a work van like this, or a big rig like this, we know commercial vehicle accidents. 
and we know how to get you the big money you may deserve. If any commercial vehicle hurts you, call the twos. We win for you. Hurt by a commercial vehicle? Call the twos. We win for you. Call 222-2222. Maine Commercial Solar offers a variety of services, including solar system design, sales, maintenance, and installation. Maine Commercial Solar can help you with existing or new systems. We offer packages for installation by others, or we can help you build your own solar array, smaller residential, or anything in between. Maine Commercial Solar is currently hiring in Herman for multiple positions. We offer competitive pay, a 3% IRA match, vacation, holiday time, and a family-oriented environment. If interested, please call Jason at 848-7486. This is going to be the toughest Next Level Chef yet. I want my mom. Only the best will survive. All new Next Level Chef, Thursdays at 8, 7 central on Fox. Hi there, I'm Emma Smith, and coming up on Good Morning Maine, we'll hear from an expert on what exactly is and is not legal as far as sports betting in the state goes. And we'll have our Pet of the Week segment, a personal favorite for me, and we'll have a live interview with a local game warden about ice safety. These stories and more coming up. Welcome back. Students at All Saints Catholic School took part in a service project benefiting the homeless. Our Matthew Jaronsik has more. Students at All Saints Catholic School helped assemble care packages that will be delivered to those who need a little extra help in the Bangor community. It makes you feel good when you can have you and a little kid help make a difference in the community. This act of kindness is part of Catholic Schools Week. Students at All Saints Catholic School participate in a variety of activities throughout the week that will help celebrate the educational mission of the schools all over Maine that fall within the diocese. Today's activity included putting hand warmers, food, water, and trash bags into care packages, ensuring the homeless will be taken care of. I want them to maybe feel like someone did this for me, someone cares. The, the people that made this really cared about who I was and they didn't judge that. The students who helped out are supporting the PATH program, a program offered by Community Health and Counseling Services. Members of the team were at the school watching the students assemble the bags, excited that the kids were able to lend a helping hand. It's really special to have, uh, you know, the kids in the community give back to folks who uh, are unsheltered and so this gives them a bit of hope who we're outreaching to, um, to get some basic supplies and just let them know that there's kiddos out there and other people in the community that still care about them. It's a really concrete thing, something food that kids can relate to. It allows them to really understand how they're able to directly help somebody that's really needing that support. All Saints Catholic School fourth grader Shyla Knight was one student who helped create care packages for the homeless. She says it's important that no matter what's going on in your life, people do what they can to help you out. Everybody's important in their own way, and it's okay if, um, if you're homeless, they're loved. In Bangor, Matthew Jaronsik, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. A traveling exhibit is now on display at the Wilson Center for Spiritual Exploration and Multi-Faith Dialogue in Orono. The visual and narrative exhibit called Focus on Abortion, Americans Share Their Stories was created by photographer Rosalind Banish. It features stories from across the U.S. from women who've had abortions, their partners, and health professionals who provide abortion care. The exhibit will be on display through February 23rd with an opening reception being held on February 4th. And coming up on the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22, some of the world's top tech executive an answered tough questions about child safety before Congress. And Donald Trump speaks to the Teamsters Union leadership. We'll hear from both the former president and the union on that meeting. Coming up. High Tide Restaurant and Bar, voted number one in outdoor seating, offers live music, a banquet room, and a new menu. Come take in the spectacular view of the Penobscot River while enjoying the freshest seafood in town. High Tide Restaurant and Bar, located at 5 South Main Street in Brewer. Football fans, with the Caesars Sportsbook app, you can be in the game all the time. Seeking instant action? Quick Picks offers you the most popular games and markets already built for you and ready to bet. Experience the thrill when you stack your bets to create a super parlay. Build bets for your favorite teams and players across multiple games. This season, don't just watch the game. Download Caesars Sportsbook and experience the game like never before. 
great. Scott, this is Green Bear 420 in 2010. What kind of trip is this? I gotta get back to 2023. Wait, it's 2015. So much has changed. In 2023, we had a lot more glass, t-shirts, and novelties. It's gonna take a bolt of lightning to get me home. Finally, home at last. Now Green Bear 420, Green Bear Green Care is bigger and better than ever. To be continued. Come stop by Triple S Tax Shop, 315 Hamden Road, Carmel, for quality clothing and equestrian gear. Farming and cowboy life is definitely in my blood. The one thing that's missing for me is somebody to share all this with. So who thinks they've got what it takes to make it in the country? Yeah. It's risky, because they're from the city. I'm the fish out of water. I hope they're ready to get dirty. Ah. What are we getting ourselves into? I'm vegan. How would that work for the beef market? Yeah. Oh. High Tide Restaurant and Bar, voted number one in outdoor seating, offers live music, a banquet room, and a new menu. Come take in the spectacular view of the Penobscot River while enjoying the freshest seafood in town. High Tide Restaurant and Bar, located at 5 South Main Street in Brewer. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor. Some of the top executives in big tech were grilled by senators on Capitol Hill over what they feel is a failure to protect children online. Fox's Aisha Hosni with that story. Mark, do you take any blame for these kids who are dead? Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg racing out of a fiery hearing on Capitol Hill today as he and the leaders of TikTok, X, Snap and Discord tried in vain to convince the powerful Senate Judiciary Committee that they've made advances to protect children from predators, drugs, bullying and harmful content that could lead to suicide. We've restructured our trust and safety teams to remain strong, and agile. But senators from both parties weren't buying it. Your platforms really suck at policing themselves. Children are not your priority. Children are your product. Then, in a stunning moment, Senator Josh Hawley called on Zuckerberg to apologize to the dozens of grieving parents in the room holding pictures of their dead children. You're on national television. Would you like now to apologize to the victims? I, I I felt like that was half-hearted. Lawmakers are now ready to give families the right to sue social media sites for damages. Open up the courthouse door. Until you do that, nothing will change. And they put each executive on the record asking if they'll support any of the dozens of bipartisan bills ready to rein in big tech. Is there any one of you willing to say now that you support this bill? Mr. Chairman, let the record reflect a yawning silence from the leaders of the social media platforms. Still no timeline on when Congress might actually act, but Senator Lindsey Graham says he will try to force a vote on five separate bills and then call up House Speaker Mike Johnson to have a similar hearing in that chamber. On Capitol Hill, I'm Aisha Husney, Fox News. Meanwhile, the border security bill under scrutiny in the Senate has been declared as, quote, absolutely dead by Speaker of the House Mike Johnson. The White House and a group of bipartisan senators have been working on the legislation for weeks and hope to officially unveil something as early as this week. Any deal, though, appears to immediately face an uphill battle in the House. White House Press Secretary said the White House Secretary Press Secretary says that's not in line with Republicans' calls to address the border crisis. For years, they have refused to heed the president's request for action on much-needed funding for border security. For example, in the bill the president introduced in his first day in office more than a thousand days ago, he requested funding to develop and deploy exped expediting screening technology to improve our ability to catch narcotics and contraband 
at every port of entry. Republicans never acted on the bill. Each year in office, President Biden has requested record-breaking border security funding into law. But without exception, House Republicans have tried to stop the president from delivering the resources we need at the border. In contrast to Trump and House Republican statements, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell continues to press the importance of continued aid to Ukraine, which is also included in the bill. Former President Trump is courting the Teamsters Union one week after another auto workers union endorsed President Biden for 2024. He visited the union's headquarters in Washington today. Fox's Connor Hansen has more from New York. We had a very, very productive meeting. Former President Trump spent the day meeting with Teamsters leaders and members during the union's annual meeting. With more than a million members, the union represents UPS workers, film and TV production workers, and members of law enforcement. An endorsement would be a major win for Trump as he courts blue-collar voters. Usually a Republican wouldn't get that endorsement for many, many years. They've they only do Democrats, but in my case, it's different because I've employed thousands of Teamsters. The meeting comes just a week after the United Auto Workers Union endorsed President Joe Biden, who's billed himself as the most pro-union president in history. I'm proud you have my back. Let me just say I'm honored to have your back and you have mine. That's the deal. The UAW told Fox it never considered endorsing Trump. Nowhere in history has Donald Trump ever stood for the American worker. Um, he stands against pretty much everything that we stand for. But the Teamsters have signaled they're open to talking to everyone. What you've done in the past doesn't guarantee you a future with us. We want to know what you're going to do for our members moving forward. The union endorsed Biden in 2020. On Thursday, President Biden is traveling to Michigan, a key battleground state, to meet with UAW members. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox News. Well, after U.S. officials said they stopped a major cyber attack by China, the director of the FBI is speaking out about the need for stronger defenses. We turn again to Fox's Connor Hansen for that story. Cybersecurity is national security. Cybersecurity and law enforcement officials say we've reached a crucial point where the country's defenses need to be improved. They recently found and eradicated Chinese-backed malware aimed at destabilizing U.S. infrastructure and inciting panic. The main targets? American transportation systems, water treatment plants, and the electrical grid. China's hackers are positioning on American infrastructure in preparation to wreak havoc and cause real-world harm to American citizens and communities. Security experts say China could be preparing to gain leverage over the U.S. in the event of a war or invasion of Taiwan. You don't, you don't do reconnaissance for fun. So the Chinese are clearly thinking about worst case scenarios. Lawmakers even brought up the potential implications the cyber warfare could have on the presidential election. If the CCP were to want to change TikTok feeds to bias one candidate or another in the upcoming presidential election, would they be able to do so? Uh, my understanding is that under Chinese law, that would be something that they would be permitted to do. Officials urging lawmakers to provide the necessary funding to beef up U.S. cybersecurity training and product design. FBI Director Christopher Wray said China has more hackers than every major country combined, and their hackers would outnumber the FBI's cyber agents and intelligence analysts 50 to 1. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox News. The United States and its allies are increasingly worried that in the coming years, Chinese President Xi could order his military to seize Taiwan. Officials are stepping up diplomatic efforts to try to ensure that won't happen. But all this as the U.S. continues to be concerned about a host of Chinese threats. Fox's senior foreign affairs correspondent Greg Palcott has that story. Taiwan's military is finishing up exercises, honing its ability to defend against a surprise attack from China. China's unilateral and brutal actions can easily lead to rising tensions. The threat to Taiwan is one of many flashpoints in U.S.-China relations. President Biden has repeatedly said he would use U.S. troops to defend Taiwan in a conflict with China. But the two leaders haven't spoken recently. We agreed that President Biden and President Xi should speak. Uh, and should speak by telephone relatively soon. There really is no substitute for leader-to-leader -leader 
conversation. U.S. agencies are taking China's threats seriously. The FBI director is testifying to the House Select Committee Wednesday on everything from Chinese hacker threats to our infrastructure to China stealing our ideas and data. The PRC has a bigger hacking program than that of every major nation combined. The CIA director admitted to doubling the agency's budget for China-related intelligence, writing in an op-ed, quote, while Russia may pose the most immediate challenge, China is the bigger long-term threat. The Biden administration has come under fire for catering to China, sending several diplomats there after Xi and Biden met face-to-face last November. But officials insist they are sticking to their priorities. This intensive diplomacy was about managing tough issues rather than patching up the relationship. We were direct about our differences. President Xi has reportedly told President Biden that China will not interfere in the 2024 presidential elections. In London, Greg Palcott, Fox News. Still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, will the Fed cut interest rates? Many businesses and company shareholders want to rate sooner rather than later, but are pessimistic about the details. And in sports, Amy Vashon is sticking around for at least four more years. Hear from her and the Black Bears right after the break. The Great American Race. The Daytona 500, February 18th. And don't miss the clash Sunday at 8 Eastern on Fox. Comfy, cozy, relaxing. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture, affordable prices. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. CEM DP Ford of Contractors have been in business for more than 40 years. We have recently added an electrical division to further be of service to our loyal customers. CEM specializes in design, built, and commercial and residential projects. Whether you need help with older construction, new build outs, or electrical services, CEM has you covered. CEM is currently hiring for all positions. We offer competitive pay as well as great benefits. To inquire about employment or construction, please reach out to 848-7486 or visit cemmain.com. When Ye Olde General Store in Carmel wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Ye Olde General has everything you ever need, whether it be fresh cooked meal, kerosene, wood pellets, pizza and fried food, or a drink after work, Ye Olde General has you covered. Come bowl a few games here at Bangor Brewer Bowling Lanes. We're one of the only Candlepin Bowling Alley Centers in Maine, conveniently located in the heart of Brewer. You always have the opportunity to simply bowl for fun. However, you can also join a league. We have youth leagues, adult and senior leagues. Now don't forget, we also host birthday parties for under $100, and gift certificates are also available. Give us a call right away at 989-3798 to make reservations for your birthday party today. Hank's Husqvarna is your full-line Husqvarna dealer with two convenient locations, 32 Old State Road in Carmel and 19 Moosehead Trail in Newport. Whether it's tractors and zero turns, chainsaws to trimmers, or pressure washers to snow blowers, everything is set up, serviced, and ready to go by our certified Husqvarna technician. And all sales are backed by our in-house Husqvarna warranty. For parts, service, or sales, stop in to Hank's Husqvarna, Carmel or Newport. Durable, sturdy, stylish, not Joe, Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood, built to last, made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe, Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. Welcome back. Toyota is urging owners to stay away from certain vehicles that are linked to airbag issues. The car manufacturer and General Motors say 61,000 vehicles with Takata airbag inflators should not be driven until a fix is made. The recall includes RAV4s from 2004 and 2005, as well as 2003 to 2004 Matrix hatchbacks and Pontiac Fibes. Toyota says the airbags should or could shoot out shrapnel if they are deployed, which could lead to injuries or even death. Owners are advised to contact a dealer for repairs. The Biden administration is extending talks on its student loan relief program. After mounting pressure, the Education Department agreed to extend those talks 
Advocates and progressive lawmakers have urged the Education Department to return to the bargaining table after previous negotiations broke down in December. They want the White House to bring more student loan forgiveness to more Americans, despite whatever legal or political hurdles they could face later. The Education Department proposed relieving the debt for borrowers who've been paying back their loans for more than 20 years and for giving up to $20,000 for borrowers whose payments have increased because of interest. But many critics say that doesn't go far enough. Businesses and the markets will have to wait for a much-needed drop in interest rates, leaving many asking the same question. If not now, then when? Fox's Casey Stiegel has the latest from Dallas. We understand that our actions affect communities, families, and businesses across the country. Everything we do is in service to our public mission. The Fed holding interest rates steady Wednesday. The key short-term interest rate remains in the 5% range, and it has been at this 23-year high since July. Many are expecting cuts this year, but officials didn't offer much clarity on exactly when that could happen. We want to see more good data. It's not that we're looking for better data. It's, we're looking at continuation of the good data that we've been seeing. It's all in the rhetoric, so we have to learn to read between the, the Fed tea leaves, if you will. Several events could push a rate cut further down the road. Wars in Ukraine and the Middle East could disrupt economic progress. We can see ourselves drawn further into that mess, and that will be expensive. And with all the financing we have to do further ahead, that would put upward pressure on interest rates as well. Rate cut discussions are taking place against an intensifying presidential campaign, with the economy becoming a polarizing issue. Some experts think the Federal Reserve might do what it can to keep its boss in office. It's an election year. My guess is that Washington is going to pull every lever they can to put lipstick on a pig, make things look as good as they can for all the obvious reasons, and that includes perhaps twisting the Fed's arm a little bit. The Fed's next policymaking meeting is scheduled for March. That is the latest from Dallas. Casey Stiegel, Fox News. And coming up, we'll have all of the latest on our full five-day forecast. Be interesting to see what is in store there. Stay with us. Oh, boy. We had some cold, cold temperatures earlier this morning. Five below zero here in town. Check out Millinocket, 13 below zero. Is it going to get colder by tomorrow morning, or are we finally going to warm up? I'll have the answers coming up. When you've experienced fire and smoke damage in your home, when pipes break and you have water everywhere, when you're concerned about your family's health because of mold, you need a friendly face to take care of it all. You need the friendly faces of Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. We're just a click or call away. Whatever life throws at you, Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration is here for you. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. Don't get cold feet this winter. Stay warm and dry with high-performance footwear from Comfort Shoes and more. With an extensive selection of winter boots rated from 0 to minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit, you'll find comfort in knowing your feet will be warm in any weather. Discover the latest in functional and fashionable footwear with grippers built right into the sole. With boots in stock up to 6E and size 17 for men and women. Take the drive to Newport for a sit and fit to find your perfect fit. You and your feet will be glad you did. Let's face it, getting training and experience is hard, but at Loring Job Corps, we can help. From certifications in automotive technology, obtaining your CDL, or learning building trades, we have you covered. Maybe you prefer joining the high-tech world of computer networking or cybersecurity. We have that as well. Don't delay. Get in the driver's seat to your future today. And the best part? Loring Job Corps is free. Receive free training, free meals, and even free housing. Call or go to jobcorp.gov slash loring. Job Corps careers begin here. I started smoking at age 16. I was scared when they found cancer in my lung. Lung cancer, still the deadliest cancer in Maine. But a new test can find it earlier when treatment is more successful. They were able to remove my cancer and I went back to work, but now I'm retired. If you're age 55 or older and smoke now or smoked heavily in the past, ask your provider if lung cancer screening is right for you. And learn more at ScreenMaine.org. Who are you? I'm no one. Stop lying! I'm just the cleaning lady. The Cleaning Lady premieres Tuesday, March 5th on Fox.
Welcome back, folks. Our main weather tonight is brought to you by Diversified Ink Tattoo Studio in Penobscot Plaza in Bangor, providing custom ink by licensed artists for over 20 years. All right, get ready. A little bit more snow is moving in. Yes, more snow. It is middle of winter. No surprises here. But middle of the country has really been dry and warm. Closer to Chicago, St. Louis, up into Wisconsin, Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, all of these spots right here, they've been a very, very warm. Well, near record highs earlier today. We saw 50s, mid 50s in Minneapolis earlier today. For our area, nothing like that. We're talking upper 20s earlier today and some mostly cloudy skies. Of course, we are getting that snow overnight tonight, mainly tomorrow morning and then into the day on Thursday, of course, but maybe a little bit over some sprinkles may mix in with temperatures in those mid to upper 30s here in town. For the most part, of course, we see this right just north of Bangor. So we're talking Millinocket area down into Greenville. We are talking mainly snow, pretty much all snow up there and very light accumulations. You got to go closer to Caribou to get into three, maybe four inch snow totals. That will be possible, of course, with temperatures well below freezing. And then by Friday morning, things are finally going to clear out that Low pressure system will be moving out of the region. Possibly a couple of lingering flurries will be in the area, but overall, though, very light accumulations. Generally, around half an inch up to an inch. I'm thinking less than an inch here in town, especially by the coast. By the coast, you might just see a trace with that little mix of rain and snow. And then we're talking up north. Now you got Millinocket area, then you got up to Greenville, and then north of that. That's where those snowfall totals will be one, two, three plus inches the closer you get to caribou the winds are pretty light anywhere around five ten miles per hour all over the region we got machias at four then we have uh, bar harbor at three rockland though not too bad they have pretty much very calm winds with this cool cool temperatures that are still in the region it's going to be a bit breezy by tomorrow though we're talking wind gusts near 20 that's not too bad though we've seen a lot worse but still with wind gusts around 20 a little bit of that rain and snow mix by machias into bar harbor it's just not going to be the best day to go outside and just spend some quality time outdoors. Temperature wise though, our average here in town is 28. We're going to stay below that. Check this out. I mean, we're going to stay above that Thursday into Friday. Then we're going to be below average by Saturday, right back to above average temperatures Sunday, Monday, and then once again into Tuesday. So by middle of next week, still some slightly above average temperatures will be lingering in the area. Now for tonight, though, we're looking at upper teens, temperatures near 20, mostly cloudy skies and a light breeze for tomorrow. Mid 30s outside, mainly snow showers, some rain may mix in as well and a light breeze. Very light accumulations. Our extended forecast outlook does show 20s back by Saturday and then hovering near 30 Sunday into Monday. So the highs will be offering some relief at least for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Looking forward to a bit of a warmer week. Indeed. All right. Sports is coming right up next. Stay with us. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of built Ford Tough. Now get 1.9% APR for 72 months on a 2023 Ford F-150, only at your New England Ford dealers. Quitting smoking, vaping, and other tobacco may be tough, but you can do it. Even if you don't get it right the first time, don't give up. Working with a quit coach increases your chances of successfully quitting, especially combined with quit medications. That's why each quit program through the main quit link offers free patches, gum, and or lozenges and helps you build a customized quit plan. Call 1-800-QUIT-NOW or enroll online at mainquitlink.com. It's free and it works. Tired of your internet service constantly letting you down? Those other providers may promise the world with their flashy advertisements, but are you truly having a good customer experience? Fear not, because there's a new player in town. Introducing GoNet Speed. No more endless hold times or automated responses. We're here to listen, support, and provide you with the exceptional service you deserve. Our fast, reliable fiber internet, it's mind-blowing. Let us show you what true internet satisfaction feels like.
Saturday on Fox Prime Time Hoops. Hey everybody, Ryan Sudall here. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's start with some big news out of Orono. One day after Amy Vashon agreed to a contract extension with the University of Maine, it's being announced that Maine hockey coach Ben Barr has done the same. Barr will be in Maine through 2028, signing an extension that kicks in next season with a $450,000 annual salary, 15,000 raises each year, and more money towards the assistant coaches, which is big. Barr has taken the Black Bears from a team that won just five conference games in his first year to now a contender for the Hockey East crown. He says so far, simply, it's been, it's been fun out there, but there's a lot of work ahead of them in order to reach the goal of being perennial championship contenders. You know, hopefully we can add something to this community and, you know, it's fun to be here on a Friday and a Saturday night. But the other side of that is we have to be stewards of it and understand that as nice as it is today, that doesn't, that's not guaranteed tomorrow. And our guys appreciate that too because a lot of them have been here for the last two or three years and they see, okay, it's always great, but if we want it to be like it is today, it's, it's our job and our duty to make sure the standard stays high. Okay, let's stay in Orono now. We mentioned Amy Vashon having her contract extended by the university. The Black Bears back home this week after a road trip to New York. They're back in action in the pit on Thursday. The university announced Monday that Vashon is now under contract to 2028 as well. In her six years with the Black Bears, she has been named the conference's coach of the year four times and led her squad to two NCAA tournaments. She's amassed 143 wins in her time and has built a resume that most coaches would try to use and move up. But the Augusta native and former Black Bear says she's not enticed by the potential of more money and a bigger conference. I love Maine. I love the university. Um, you know, our program and, you know, it's just home. A lot of times um, the grass isn't always greener and, you know, I, I'm happy and um, I was once told don't mess with happy. Just because you have a chance to go somewhere else or make some more money, it doesn't necessarily mean it's better for you. Love that. And while Vashon is certainly happy with the Black Bears, the Black Bears are also happy with her. We caught up with fifth-year senior Ann Simon and former Wyndham girls basketball standout Sarah Tallon, who both offered high praise for their head coach. Coach, coach Vashon comes to win, and she does what she can for you know our team to be successful. A lot of and off the court, you know, for her to play here and then stay as a coach, you know, it sets a great example for young women like me. Yeah, I'm really happy for her. Um, just happy to see that she's going to stay for at least four more years. I'm just really thankful for her for everything she does for this program, but also for me. I'm always able to go talk to her if I have anything, and so does everyone else. So really happy for her. They are not messing around with those coaches. Okay, now let's go over to Guilford. PCHS hosted a basketball doubleheader against Dexter Wednesday night. The Pirates boys team and Tiger girls team picking up wins. But the big winner of the night was the Eliza Jean Family Cancer Foundation. The annual Eliza Jean Stutzman Memorial Basketball Games raised $2,920 this year. The games are named in honor of Eliza Jean, a Harmony resident who passed away in 2013, age 13, from brain cancer. At the time of her passing, her father Craig was teaching at PCHS and started this yearly tradition, which raises thousands every year for families of children with cancer in Maine. The continued support every year, year after year, makes it more and more special. It warms my heart to think that the community can come together. Um, it's more than just a basketball game against two rivals. It's something that we can come together and support a family that does so much for the community and the state. I feel a sense of pride in the community just being here tonight and helping um, make this event bigger and better every year. Awesome stuff right there. Let's stay on the hardwood for some Class B girls action Wednesday night. Old Town looking for their sixth win in a row, hosting the Hawks from Herman. Big night up at McKenzie Gym. We'll get to why in just a bit. Let's start things off in the first quarter. Hawks with it. This is Izzy Byram. Nice lob pass, well placed inside to Rebecca Baumas, who banks in the lay-in. Later on, here's the big moment. Old Town senior Sage Evans can get her 1,000th career point with two free throws. There's one, and there is two. It's a mob scene. Dog pile time. Big congrats to her. Second quarter now, Herman's Lila Ryan wrestling it away from Michaela Emerson, kicks it to Bella Bowden from long range, and she buries it. Finally, Old Town's Danica Brown in the paint. 
Out to Taylor Loring for a top of the key three of her own, and it rattles in. Old Town wins big 51-18. Sage Evans, the star of the evening. Here she is on reaching 1,000 points. I had no clue that I was this close. I mean, I've never kept track, so it was great. Uh, the day before I found out, and I was so excited. I could barely sleep last night. It was awesome to have the girls I love the most. I couldn't have been here without them. I mean, so it was great to have them show that love. Congrats again to Sage. Okay, now for some other scores from the area. Class B girls basketball, Foxcroft Academy 66-33 over MDI. Class B and C girls action, Holton 45-32 over Hodgton. Class A boys hockey, St. Dom's 5-1 over Bangor. And in Class B boys hockey, Hamden Academy 6-2 over Old Town Orono. Okay, that's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. PDQ Door presents CHI Doors. CHI Doors are tough, dependable, engineered for fit and function. CHI Doors from PDQ Door, Hamden, Rockport, Bath, Waterville, Holton, Presque Isle, and PDQDoor.com. Are plumbing problems giving you a headache? Look no further than Sprague's Plumbing Solutions. With more than 10 years experience, Sprague's Plumbing Solutions has the knowledge to assist with your plumbing issues. Whether it's a service, remodel, new build, or commercial, we've got you covered. For reliable, professional plumbing services, call Sprague's Plumbing Solutions today for a free estimate. 951-1637. We're here to make your plumbing problems disappear. My experience with Dave's World was extraordinary from start to finish, and I have unconditionally and frequently recommended Dave's World to numerous friends. I love my Mitsubishi electric heat pumps from Dave's World. They're efficient, they're quiet, and it's been a joy. Every single solitary person I dealt with at Dave's World was world class. I'm delighted with the decision that I made. Dave's World, awesome. Maine Commercial Solar offers a variety of services including solar system design, sales, maintenance, and installation. Maine Commercial Solar can help you with existing or new systems. We offer packages for installation by others or we can help you build your own solar array, smaller residential or anything in between. Maine Commercial Solar is currently hiring in Herman for multiple positions. We offer competitive pay, a 3% IRA match, vacation, holiday time, and a family-oriented environment. If interested, please call Jason at 848-7486. This is Sheldon Cooper's <laughs> Theory of Relativity. All right. F is family. We have family business to discuss. We're getting a puppy? No. Then I'm not sure I care. X is love. Sweet dreams. Love you. Love you too, because you're my mom. <laughs> Young Sheldon, five times a week. On Fox 22. Always standing ready to answer the call to service. Service your garage door. PDQ door. PDQdoor.com. Put a little more cash in your bank. Save money with half off deals at foxbangor.com. If you dream of watching the Super Bowl in person, good luck. It might take a small fortune to snag one of those tickets. Online marketplace TickPick reports the average ticket for the big game is about $9,800, which is the most expensive in Super Bowl history. The cheapest ticket is $8,108, well above last year's price of about $6,000. This year's Super Bowl features the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers, as we know, who faced off in 2020, which previously held the record for the most expensive tickets. Well, we've blown that out of the water, haven't we? The ticket site says the Super Bowl's location of Las Vegas is contributing to the high prices. Ticket experts say even if prices decline closer to the game, they still will not get below the previous high. Again, set back in 2020, Super Bowl 58 is set for February 11th. DoorDash wants to prove that it can deliver almost anything with its Super Bowl giveaway. The company says it'll deliver products from every ad aired during the Super Bowl on February 11th to one lucky winner. DoorDash says prizes could include cars from BMW, Kia and Volkswagen, as well as products from Doritos, Dove, Popeyes and even a tub of mayonnaise. 
the, com the commerce platform will continue to add to its list of prizes on DoorDash, all the ads.com. To join the sweepstakes, watch the DoorDash commercial during the game to crack a code, then enter it on the website. DoorDash will pick one lucky winner. Well, finally tonight, top comedy improvisers in the state are coming together for a benefit show that aims to help support a Maine family whose little boy is fighting against multiple medical issues, and that little boy isn't even a year old yet. This is Cody. Cody has spent all but three days of his life in the hospital after being born seven weeks early and then being diagnosed with multiple heart-related conditions, including one that's permanent. He's endured not one, but two open-heart surgeries and is even scheduled for another procedure this week. He's being treated at Boston Children's Hospital, and his family says because his condition changes so frequently, his mother must be with him at all times while his dad stays behind in Maine to work. The family is from Standish, and Cody's uncle is organizing a comedy benefit show to raise funds to help the family with the costs of keeping Cody's mom with him in Boston. Now that this is his new normal, it's going to be an ongoing expense for some time. So this is our opportunity to help raise awareness of their situation, to help raise money to cover those costs. Because right now, though insurance is covering Cody, it's not covering their stay or their expenses while they're down there. Just so unbelievably precious. Well, the event will feature family-friendly comedy improv similar to what you'd see on the beloved show Whose Line Is It Anyway? The show is at Nason's Community Center and Little Theater in Springvale, Maine on February 3rd. It starts at 7 p.m. and tickets are 20 bucks. Now, if you can't make it down to Springvale for the show, you can certainly still help by donating to the family. We will have all of the show information and a link to donate online. Just head to this story on our website, foxbangor.com. And by the way, Cody's first birthday is at the end of February. So let's pull together to help this family get him there. Hmm. Unbelievable. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You can only imagine what that family is going through. Yeah, it's so tough yeah. for everyone involved, but uh, great on, on the uncle to step up and make this happen. Hope yeah. that they get a ton of people uh, to, to come out to the show and also just to donate. Absolutely. I hope they get, you know, just crushed by donations yeah. and, you know, feel all of the love from across the state of Maine. Absolutely. All righty, folks. Well, that is going to do it for us. From everyone here at Fox 22 News, take care and have a great night. Good night, everyone.